Hey, it's Alex Williams here for our Pancake Breakfast, the virtual Europe edition. And I have some guests here. I want to introduce them right away. Amul Shandani, co-founder and CISO and CTO at Accurix. Hey, um, how are you? Doing good, Alex. How about Great. You? Wonderful. Cindy Blake, Senior Security Evangelist at GitLab. Frank Kim, fellow at the Sands Institute. Hello. Sanjeev Sharma, Head of Platform Engineering at Trust Financial. Hey, how are you doing? And it's uh, Truist Financial. Truist Financial. Sanjeev Sharma, Head of Platform Engineering at Truist Financial. And Katie Gamanji, Ecosystem Advocate at CNCF. Hey, Katie. Hello, everyone. So I got my pancakes. You ever? You guys have all your, your, your breakfast treats here? Oh, yeah, we uh, can. Let, this, this is one of the best. I've had, oh, look at that. We got pancakes. We got cereal. We got, we got the Starburst minis. So you just pour those over your, is that what you do? You just pour those over your pancakes? Just That's like, exactly uh, what I intend to do. Imagine okay, our good. pancakes here. Good, good, good. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> hey, hey, Frank, could you pass me the syrup? Do you have any syrup over there? Oh, yeah, sure thing. Here you go. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Hey, there we go. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, that was flawless, right? <laughs> I was reading jokes beforehand of pancake jokes. Um, you know, there was one about a, a dad who who uh was telling saying this kid, yeah, I had this friend, his name was uh his last name was Up, and he got knighted in England because he was such a hero. And they said when the queen gave him uh gave him his uh you know his uh sword or whatever they do. He said, I, 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 I now um, bequeath thee, sir, up. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is bad. Oh. Okay. Well, let's just get started right into our discussion. It's on secure GitOps. And I want to go right to Ohm. And, and one of the first questions I have, and before I get started, though, everyone can ask questions at the end. It's this is recorded, and so we're going to have the opportunity for people to ask questions live. So you're here and you're watching this. Ask a question, please. Ohm, there are so many open source projects that are related to GitOps now. Can you please give us a rundown of those projects? And let's just get right into it from there. Um, sure. Um, and, and before I give you the list of those, you know, famous ones, you know, maybe I can also quickly you know, for the benefit of uh, level setting and everyone who's listening, right? What precisely is GitOps, right? Just a couple of lines of definitions, right? Um, so GitOps is basically your code base infrastructure and operational deployment practice that, you know, specifically relies upon Git and it uses infrastructure's code as well as uh, DevOps uh, methods to deliver high velocity CI CD uh, for specifically Kubernetes control plane. Uh, of course, it can be applied elsewhere too, but you know, GitOps predominantly dominates the Kubernetes world. And um, you know, with that definition, some of the well-known tools that are currently under usage and practice within the community are Argo, CD, uh, Flux, then uh, you know, Jenkins X. You know, I'm not sure what's the shelf life of Jenkins X, but uh, it is still being used. And then Scaffold. Uh, Kaniko, as well as Tekton. These are some of the really well-known ones. And of course, uh, there is another, you know, open source project which uh, is delivering GitOps and similar capabilities for control planes, which are lower than uh, Kubernetes in the tech stack, uh, which is called as Atlantis. Uh, so Atlantis also, you know, allows to, you know, do automation using pull request-based uh, mechanisms. Um, and just one point that, you know, uh, we'll Everybody will hear a lot of pull request today in the conversation, but pull requests are the central technology uh, behind GitOps, uh, you know, uh, methodologies and offerings. And that desired state is really what what is the goal here to really reach that desired state, and so that becomes then a real reason why you need, you know, it's integrated deeply into the CI/CD workflow. And Katie. How does GitOps rank in the overall ecosystem as something of interest to people? And what are the questions that you're hearing surface about GitOps and and the and just the general discussion about it? I think GitOps has really taken the ecosystem discussion, especially in the past months. Um, 
Within the, the community, I think there has been a lot of adoption as well. And this is always a good sign, especially from the end user community. And we actually, when we kickstarted the technology radars from CNCF, which pretty much tries to showcase what the end users are usually using in their production system at this time, there are already some usages of tools such as Argo CD and Flux, which is a very good indicator, especially because at the time when it did uh, the continuous delivery technology radar, um, this was around August last year. So at that time, we had Argo CD and Flux being either a sandbox or an incubation project. So still early projects, but how they had this adoption within the end user community, which is always a good plus. So um, I definitely think this is something which will be more um, maybe present within the infrastructure nowadays. So it's always good to explore it from different angles, especially security, which I'm looking forward to discuss more today. Frank, I know you had some thoughts on this. Man, you know, Om and Katie, the, what you were just mentioning, the tools you were just describing, it made me think back to early in my career. And you guys might find this hard to believe, is when I first started my career, we were deploying to production once every 18 months. It was ridiculous. And, you know, we didn't have any of those tools or processes or methodologies that you guys were just describing. And uh, if only we had, you know, we didn't even have Git, of course, back then. And this is why I'm so excited about a tool like Flux, for example, ensuring the state of your Kubernetes clusters match your configuration. Wow, if we only had that you know, 20 plus years ago, right? We, our minds would have been blown. So it's really exciting where GitOps is going now. And I think from a large enterprise perspective, right? So I'm, I'm working for a pretty large uh, financial institution right now. We've covered both banking and insurance. One of the things we look for when we're looking for some of these open source projects is are the vendors supporting it, right? Because it's very difficult for a large uh, enterprise uh, to to adopt open source without, you know, uh, they, they tend to go, go towards open source projects which have been commercialized. So there's commercial support available. The issue isn't there that is a vendor supporting. The issue is who's going to support it tomorrow, and uh, can I rely on a community support or can I get commercial support for it? So I think from a GitOps perspective, what is a very encouraging when I look at it is seeing some of the larger vendors now talking about GitOps and including it in their in their commercially supported tools, because that's what will drive large scale enterprise grade you know, adoption, right? We love to tinker with open source projects in large enterprises, but the moment you talk about you know, controlling your company's crown jewels with a open source project, you get all kinds of pushback saying, okay, where, who's going to support this? Do we have the structures in house or are we going to rely on a commercial a vendor to either provide support or provide a commercial variant of it? So I think, that to me, you know, to to uh, to to you know the in the direction tells me that okay, this is really mainstream because we can eventually now start implementing it in a large enterprise. So, Cindy, what's the security posture that you're seeing customers taking, and how does GitOps fit into that? Yeah, this is related cool. to Kubernetes development and deployment and management, really. Right, absolutely, and I want to follow on um, the, the point that was made earlier too about GitLab has really proven the open source approach. Uh, we've got a vast community of contributors and um, we, you know, customers can, can add things that they need and, and GitLab will GA it and uh, continue on. So in addition to that, we have the you know, open DevOps platform and from a security standpoint, GitOps is really important, and it's and it's an emerging area where people um, are concerned about because there hasn't been a, a history of traditional tools to draw on, and we've solved it first for um, scanning, embedding the scanning within your DevOps lifecycle. That's, you know, it may not sound like GitOps, but that's what I would consider an essential foundation piece that you need to have a, a secure software base to start with. And then your infrastructure is equally important. And so we are working, in fact, Acurix has done some work with GitLab to integrate their capability and bring those results even into the developer's pipeline for really early visibility and transparency. Man, that's a really good point, Cindy. You know, that there's a lot of these foundational best practices that we can now automate. And Sanjeev just mentioned earlier the, the crown jewels and, and why are we doing all of this? It's not just to 
deploy faster from a security perspective, we've got the mean time to remediate, which you know people say that's anywhere from two to three months on average in terms of fixing your serious security vulnerabilities. And this is really what GitOps and these modern practices and tools allows us to do is to shrink that window of exposure so we can better protect our organizations. I think that's where we all want to want to get to. I, I think you're spot on there, right? I mean, at the end of the day, uh, the whole ability to secure and, you know, with the recent, and I don't want to name any companies here, you know, just to put them in a bad, bad light, but recent issues with, uh, you know, delivery pipelines, the recent issue with supply chains, I only expose the flaws we have and the vulnerabilities we have in our entire supply chain, right? And having security at every point along the way, <clears throat> To validate and do the you know the, the 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 detective corrective and preventive controls all through the supply chain is essential, and it is becoming with the complexity we have of 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 Kubernetes and the integrations we have to do with third party systems and services coming from multiple cloud vendors and SaaS providers, it's becoming humanly impossible to track all that. We have to have these detective preventive con uh, corrective controls as code, and they need to be a part of the code, and they need to be enacted. The moment the code changes, and to me, the what's encouraging is GitOps help, is helping us take take us down that path where everything becomes code, including these these controls we need to put in for security and compliance. They are also code, which means I, as a human, you know, we don't have to throw more bodies at it. We don't have to worry about cognitive overload. We don't have to worry about toil. It can be truly managed by as code. And if I yeah. can jump in there, that because it's code. You really want to treat the infrastructure as code the same as you would application code in terms of inspecting it, managing it, version control, access control, all of those things as well. Yep. Yeah, and, good. You know, and um, you know, to to Cindy's point and also Sanjeev, uh, you know, the, the challenges that you are raising. Um, the good thing is about GitOps is that GitOps is built um, for technologies especially like Kubernetes, which are declarative in nature by default. And so all the GitOps technologies also are uh, following the same design you know, language, which is they remain uh, almost you know, close to 100% declarative in nature. Now that solves a very fundamental problem that we face in security, which is the security teams cannot keep up with the DevOps teams or GitOps teams, right? Operations teams, basically. And the new paradigm of GitOps is actually pushing us towards no ops situation because everything is code. Nobody needs to kick in a pipeline separately in GitOps world. You just make changes into your code and the cluster gets uh, synced with the state of the code. So the security also should get synced up in the same speed. And that's where the declarative nature of these technologies, especially Argo, you know, Flux, and many others, it comes very handy. So now you can declaratively feed in or plug in security within the GitOps, you know, tool chain as well. For example, you can do policy as code within GitOps now because the fundamental technologies that GitOps uses is anyways, um, you know, your hem charts, your Terraform, your customized templates. And these technologies go very well with the CNCF ecosystem, especially around OPA-based project, open policy age project. So this allows you to bake in your security also declaratively, which has been, in my opinion, a fundamental uh, transformation, how security is going to be done in near future. Uh, it is not gonna be done in a reactive manner. Security now will become really, it will become possible for security to be able to plug in into a declarative tool chain like you know GitOps, so it will be proactive, and it'll be before the fact. So that's a big change that I'm seeing that is coming for us in in the GitOps world and the security combined with it. I honestly couldn't agree more. Um, I actually got to think about how we reach a state where GitOps is something where it's actually the next step for many organ organizations. And the more I think about this is that currently technology became the delta or the differentiator for any business. So if you're thinking about any company out there, it's going to be having a part of it being tech. And it's more like the most important feature about this is to deliver fast your features. 
And that's why we moved from a pool-based system when it comes to CI/CD to a push-based system. Actually, is that the vice versa? With uh, with the GitOps, we're actually um, pulling the changes from the Git, uh, the Git repositories. Now, with this particular model, we have a better transparency and a better DX as well for our developers because when interacting with infrastructure, it's not just about having a pipeline; it's thinking about the other side. So, how the developers do actually interact with this pipeline? Do they have enough abstraction? on top of all the configuration, do they have enough flexibility to deliver how they want in the manner they want? So I think with, with the GitOps, there is a matter of transparency. And at the same time, it's um, a system which allows it for, for our developers to deploy faster as well. Um, and one of the things that I want to mention that uh, I've been encountering in the, in the past teams as well, when we use a pool-based um, um, system there always we had different environments but the staging of the production environment would always be different there'd be the case when the changes would be deployed in staging and they would be working fine and then towards the production we always would have a change window which means or you, you would do it in a particular day or a particular hour and usually that happened uh to result with multiple commits to be pushed at the same time which increased our um uh, pretty much disaster rate if uh, if everything if anything would go wrong. Now with the GitOps model, we'll always be aware of what is the actual delta, and we'll always be um, uh, aware to kind of or enabled to synchronize and reconciliate the state of um, our applications. Yeah, Katie and Ohm, you guys are really talking about you know what's what's next, and it makes me think about the the evolution of where is security going and. You know, if we think back to the, some of the basic security vulnerabilities like cross-site scripting and asking developers to do output encoding now, commonly used tools, commonly used frameworks like Angular, like React, and so on, they do that output encoding automatically for the development team. And I really see GitOps as kind of the next evolution of this with, as you were all saying, everything as code, now we're building in. We're not just using it in a framework that is used within the application itself, but these platforms, right, various Git platforms and so on, have these different checks and allow us to do this incrementally. We no longer have to use that one big, one time big scanning factory, the big bang scan, if you will. And so now we could incrementally do this, treat everything as code. And really, I, I think this is where the, the future of security is going. We in security need to take more of this engineering mindset and adopt all of these best practices to, yeah, again, reduce that window of exposure. Is Kubernetes becoming the de facto now? And so, you know, whether you're using a Kubernetes environment or not, um, it's it's relevant now in GitOps because there are some limitations when you're using non non Kubernetes environments. But are we getting closer to the point where the really the de facto is you know is looking like it will be Kubernetes, maybe not in times. In, in, maybe not anytime soon. And how does security play into that as a, as a consideration? I think for the for the container world, and I let I know wanted to speak up. Sorry, I cut you off. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think for the container world, definitely Kubernetes is becoming the the de facto standard. Uh, you know, from my perspective personally, I'm keeping a very close watch at uh, some emerging projects like Kubert, because if I can use Kubernetes to now manage my my VMs, good lord, you know. Yeah, then that is the de facto standard. So I don't know if uh, if Katie, you or or anybody else has any opinions on KubeWord, but I I would be very interested if I can use the Kubernetes control plane to manage both my containers and my VMs. I mean that would be the true nirvana, right? Uh, but but you know I, I'll, I'll let you both both uh, 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 you know give your thoughts on that. Cindy, go ahead. Yeah, one um, great point there. If you can manage your VMs, what that would be awesome. Um, you know, as we look for tools to identify security flaws in the infrastructure. One thing to think about might be uh, behavioral fuzzing. I know that that's been kind of in the realm of, you know, maybe the gearheads of, you know, really out there in terms of application, but GitLab acquired some fuzz testing companies last year and have embedded it with the goal of making it much more mainstream and more usable because what fuzz testing can do is find things that you didn't know to look for, you know, and I think that's the kinds of problems that we'll get into in the infrastructure side of things. You know, application security has been around for a long time. You've got a checklist of things to look, to check the code for. It's not quite that easy from an infrastructure 
standpoint. And so that's where I think fuzzing could have a much bigger role going forward. This also gets into questions of policy and mm -hmm. there's almost like these different phases of, of these different personas that we see in the Kubernetes environments. You have the developers, you have the people that do the configurations who are often the developers, and then you have to think about the policy. So we have seen uh, the open policy agent emergent, OPA, and how does that fit in? And how does how do you think about policy? Because I think what, what that's what Cindy's alluding to a little bit. Um, when we hear her talk about um, you know that that those checkboxes and then the kind of the new scanning capabilities that we're starting to see that are just becoming practice and emerging from practices that were established long ago. Right. Um, and Alex, just a quick you know, kind of point I would like to add to your previous question as well. Um, which is about is Kubernetes becoming slowly, slowly the default uh, or de facto, you know, platform uh, for deploying applications of all scale and size. I think um, without kind of, you know, going too deep into the Kubernetes discussion, one of the empirical evidences that I'm getting as a vendor is look into the fact that we have companies like D2IQ now. We have offerings from companies like Cisco, like Cisco ACI, right, which is your multi-control plane monitoring and provisioning layer, uh, which allows you to provision Kubernetes at every scale, anywhere where, where you want to. And companies like VMware have Tanzu. OpenShift has got large offerings around Kubernetes cluster management, and so is Rancher. But these you know, products uh, are giving a lot of indication that there's a lot of demand for Kubernetes, uh, uh, not just container orchestration, but cluster management as well. And cluster management means large scale businesses are adopting it. So that's one kind of empirical evidence uh, to your previous question. As far as the policy enforcement goes, you know, so as I said, right, GitOps technologies, you know, thankfully are built on a very solid foundation of, uh, you know, being uh, declarative in nature. So what that it means, it means that we have, uh, you know, infrastructure as code technologies like, you know, hem charts, customize, and many other being the foundation of delivering GitOps. With that, um, you know, we today in the in the space where we are, we are at a maturity level where we have uh, projects like, as I said, open policy agent available, which solve the problem of polyglot infrastructure as code. All infrastructure as code technologies have some differences between them. But as soon as you start using frameworks like OPA to solve your policy enforcement, you get a lot of advantages. Thankfully, as I said, GitOps technologies, almost all of them can very easily support uh, frameworks like OPA. Uh, some other framework is, can also be supported, but OPA being the de facto standard in policy as code today, you know, with so many different, you know, stars that we see them earning on daily basis that tells me that, you know, OPA is winning the race. Um, it allows us to do policy enforcement and governance within the GitOps, you know, tool chain as well as the process. So imagine, if a developer accidentally wrote a hem chart or a customized template, which you know, allowed a container to spin with privilege escalation is equal to true or uh, a privilege which it should not have had, GitOps tool chain is automatically going to be able to detect that and not only detect that, with the help of uh, OPA, you can remediate it as well on the fly. So you can enforce certain selected policies within your GitOps tool chain in such a way that it becomes a self-healing platform. And all this is possible using open source technologies, just plugging a few things together and then you know, running it very smartly. So that's where the you know, security world is going and that's where the self-healing world is going with the help of policy as code. So to, my, to me, the perfect formula today is OPA plus Rego plus GitOps is equal to secure uh, and self-healing uh, pipelines. Sanjeev, how would you wrap all this up? We're about to our time where we need to get questions from the audience. So how would you wrap this up? So I think uh, from, from my perspective, right, this is this is an exciting time to be to be in technology, right? Because we have seen the evolution of, you know, containers come from, you know, where it was, nobody knew what would happen, right, with containers. Is it is it going to be the standard? And we saw, you know, Kubernetes then come to the scene and in just a couple of years, become the the you know the the mechanism the the technology everybody uses and this entire ecosystem right i was showing the cncf chart to somebody the other day and you know saying okay get your powerful microscope on a magnifying glass won't do anymore 
just look at the technologies there, right? I mean, and it, it you know they show the funding on top on that chart. That's a that's a brilliant uh, uh, scare the children chart. But it, what what it tells you is that there is a healthy ecosystem behind everything we are doing. This is not you know running solo. This is not some open source project which people might lose interest in tomorrow. And how do you make it secure? And how do you ensure the security and compliance overhead, which we in large enterprises have to maintain? Anyone, else, I'm just speaking from my perspective, uh, have to have to manage. This is not going to be the what keeps us from adopting these technologies. I think that's what's exciting to me, is that you know these technologies like OPA, the ability to do policy as code, security as code, do all the preventive, corrective, uh, detective measures as code will allow us to not be held back by our by our security and risk uh, and governance folks who will be very who are usually very averse to you know bringing in new technologies uh, it, oh, we, there's great. still a lot of education to be done sorry uh, you know no uh, no it's great great Katie why don't you just take it out on 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 a on a QCon note and what we'll see from GitOps just quickly at this event right we're, we're enjoying right now yeah, uh, so KubeCon is is DNA and it's going to be virtual as well. I think there is going to be a lot of good stories from, uh, again, I'm going back to the end users. So the end users are pretty much the practitioners of cloud natives. There's going to be a good uh, kind of amount of um, talks around GitOps. And I think, especially look, talking about the collocated event, there's going to be the um, security day as well. And there has been a lot of, um, the actual schedule is out and there's a lot of good pointers that I would uh, talks that I would recommend for everyone to, to, to watch as well. So um, in terms of like the CICD part, the GitOps, the security, there is going to be an amalgamation of uh, of good kind of pointers and uh, information points for the, the event. So I hope Great. everyone would uh, attend them and watch them. Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Now it's time for some questions. Please ask those questions. And I want to just maybe just quickly go through who we've had join us. Amo Shandani is co-founder and in, in CISO and CTO at Accurix. Thank you, Um, Cindy Blake, Senior Security Evangelist at GitLab. Frank Kim, fellow at the Sands Institute. Sanji Sharma, Head of Platform Engineering at Truist Financial. And Katie Gamanji, Ecosystem Advocate at CNCF. Thanks, everyone.